Okay, gonna talk about something called the modulus function. It's a function that has an absolute value or magnitude. You've met something like this in vectors where you talk about the size. In reality, you're just gonna ignore the negative bit. So we would write the modulus of four or the absolute value of four, we write with two vertical lines either side. And that means the size of four, which of course is just four. So, modulus of four is four, size of four, absolute size of four is four. The absolute size of negative three is three. The absolute size of a number is five. Now that means that the number could be five or negative five, because the absolute size of five is five and the absolute size of negative five is five. Number four. If the absolute size of a number is less than two, that means the number lies between two and negative two. So the absolute size of 1.3 is 1.3, which is less than two. The absolute size of negative one and a half is one and a half, which of course is less than two. Number five, if the absolute size of a number is less than seven, then that means the number lies between seven and negative seven. Okay, right, you do these, work out these values. So pause the video, work out those values. There are your answers. Okay. We're going to recap really quickly your binomial expansion from year 12. So in year 12, you were familiar with using this expansion. So if you were going to expand 3x minus 2 to the power 4, you would get your formula given to you on the formula sheet. Sorry, I'll go back. Get the formula given to you on the formula sheet and you would substitute in. So you would get 3x to the power 4, 4 choose 1, 3x to the power 3, you minus 2 to the power 1, 4 choose 2, which is 6, 3x all squared, negative 2 all squared, 4 choose 1, which is 4, 3x to the 1, negative 2 cubed, and negative 2 to the power 4. So you should all be quite familiar with that. You've revised it over Easter. You've then done papers. You know, we are assuming you are confident at year 12 binomial expansion. You would then get your calculator and you would substitute in. So you need to make sure you know why this simplifies to this. I'll just make sure you can see that squared power. So the key things are putting the whole thing in brackets before you raise it to power. So important things, especially when you've got negative terms and numbers in front of expansions. If you want another little bit of practice, here's a second one for you, which I have missed. Okay, so 2x to the power of 2x plus 5 to the power 4. Again, check you know what you're doing. If you are unsure on this, you need to maybe spend a bit longer on this. Pause the video and check that you know how we've gone from there to there because we'll be moving on and obviously lots of you will be able to do that quite confidently. So we're not going to spend loads of time on it. Right, so far we've only expanded expressions where the power of the bracket is a positive whole number. In the formula, that's what this means here, that the power of n is a member of the set of natural numbers. Natural numbers are positive whole numbers. What we want to be able to do in year 13 is to be able to expand expressions where n is a negative power or a fractional power. You're not allowed to use this formula. Right, it's a total non-starter. Underneath that formula that you've been using is another one. And this one is one that we use in year 13, or we can use. It's a second binomial formula, and it will work for all values of n. That's what this means. n is a set of the reals. Any value of n will work for this, as long as it's not a complex number. That's what that means there. Decimals negatives, positive whole numbers, but you just wouldn't use it for positive whole numbers because it's too hard. It's more complicated and it goes on forever. It does not stop. Also, you can only use it when you've got a one there. 
This term here looks pretty ugly and pretty complicated. Don't worry about it, okay? We're really just going to be focusing on the pattern given by these three terms at the front. So what you basically are going to get where you've got n, x is to the power 1, and you're in theory dividing by 1 factorial. When you've got two things there, n and n minus 1, you're dividing by 2 factorial and the power of x is 2. Your next one will be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial and your power of x will be 3. So let's have a look. If you're making notes, I think this should be what you write down. Your first term has got to be 1 in that bracket. You can't use this formula unless it is. Because it goes on forever, you're going to be told how far to go or to work out a specific term. And, which will be coming to later in this lesson, you will, there will be a condition of what values of x can be put into this. And we'll be talking about this over the next couple of lessons. There's a condition on what values of x the expansion works for. Right, example one. Expand in ascending powers of x up to and including the x cubed term. So there it is. It's telling you how far you've got to go. And your power of n is negative 4. So you're going to use this formula and you're fine to do it because of that being a 1. Right. First term, always 1. nx, negative 4 times the x value. So plus negative 4 times the x value. n times n minus 1. So that's negative 4 times negative 5. Your x value is squared. That's okay because it's just a single x value all over 2 factorial. Next one, n, which is negative 4, times n minus 1, which is negative 5, times n minus 2, times your x value cubed over 3 factorial, dot, dot, dot. It's going to go on forever. And then all you do is you put these in your calculator and you work them out. Next example. OK, you've got power of negative 2, so you're going to have to use this formula, but all is well because that's a 1. Issues here are it's a takeaway 3x, so careful to bracket that. First term is 1. You've got that formula in front of you, plus n, which is negative 2. I'm bracketing that because I'm afraid of it. Negative 3x is my x term, so I've bracketed those, plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial, times my x value squared. Notice how I've bracketed those, right? Because I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake and I want to square the whole of that takeaway 3x. Plus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all over 3 factorial, times your x value cubed. So again, I've bracketed those to make, because I'm scared of the negatives, Get your calculator, put them in. Again, pause your video and just check that you know what you're doing there. Right. Pause the video and you expand these as far as x squared. So you're only going to get three terms. The number term, the x term and the x squared term. So pause the video, check you can do those two. There are the answers. Right, next one, 1 plus x to the power, oh, well, it's all square rooted. Now, of course, we know that that means 1 plus x to the power of a half. So it's a fractional power. So again, we're going to use our new formula. And all is well because you've got a 1 there. So 1 plus n, which is a half, times the x value, plus n, which is a half, n minus 1 all over 2 factorial times the x value squared. Okay? n, n minus 1 times n minus 2 all over 3 factorial times the x value cubed. Get your calculator, put them in, simplify them. That's your answer. OK, example four, very similar, but you've got a negative x there again. So rewrite your 1 minus x square rooted as 1 minus x to the power of a half. 
You can use this formula because you've got a one there, but beware that X value, we've got a minus X. So we'll bracket that one plus N, which is a half times your X value. Notice that's in brackets plus N n minus 1 times your x value squared all over 2 factorial n n minus 1 n minus 2 over 3 factorial times your x value cubed and again on your calculator put them in you can see you've got your negative signs there right pause the video you expand those two. You're only going up again as far as x squared. So pause the video, check you can do them. Right, example five. Okay, what we're now going to do is we're going to go back and talk about what we started talking about at the beginning of this lesson. This condition here. Okay, so this is what we talk about as the range of values. So when you just have whatever your x value is here that you've used in your binomial expansion, it's valid for the modulus of that x value being less than 1. The absolute value of that x value being less than 1. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that in this expression, when you've expanded it, it will be valid for x is the modulus of x being less than 1 because that's what's the, that x value there and of course we know that it means x lies between 1 and negative 1. Let's look at question 2. So it's going to be the modulus of this value being less than 1 but we don't like it written like that. We like it to be written as a single x value. So that would be fine. I can see I've divided by two. And of course, that means x lying between a half or a negative a half. Similarly here, we're not worried about the negative because we know when we take the modulus of a negative value, it's just positive. We're looking at the absolute size. So we consider the modulus of this x value being less than one, which of course we know we would instantly rewrite like this. And that means that x lies between 4 and negative 4. OK, stop the video. You do these. So what ranges of x what are these expansions valid for? So if you just write those down, pausing the video, here are the answers, okay? Now, finally, we're gonna put these together. So find the first three terms of these expansion and state the range of X the expansion is valid for. So what you would do here is We've already expanded this as an earlier example. And then the condition it's valid for is the modulus of that x value being less than 1. And of course, we know that means x lies between 1 or negative 1. That was great because that's just a single x. This one here, you've already expanded this using your formula today. So I'm just going to unveil it like that. But it's valid for the modulus of 3x being less than 1, which of course we don't like. We would much prefer it written like this or like that. Pause the video, do these. Write down the first three terms of the binomial expansion of each of these following expressions, stating the range of the expansion, the range that the expansions are valid for. Pause it and then your answers are here.